Hello, my name's Joe and what we're going to be looking at in our little Houdini adventure is part two of how to create our panel fence. We'll be creating the actual panels in this tutorial and um, or in this section. Um, if you find this helpful, please like, subscribe and hit that bell for more videos and don't forget to check out my website 3dasselibrary.com for Unreal and Unity Engine assets. So, pre in the previous uh, part one, we created this fence post here where we could uh, adjust the height and um, etc so yeah just the tight of our post here and we've got a cap on the top we've got some little our uh, metal feet down here that go into the ground and um so now what we're going to do is we're going to add our panel so um following along from the previous tutorial we're going to set our height just to uh two so that we've got more of a um a uh sort of panel height here and what we're going to do is i reckon i'm going to make each panel um about four squares long um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at our panel example. So we've got here, and we're going to be we're going to make all our uh, panels uh, just uh, sort of a four. So I essentially went on the theory of about a two meter length um, panel. So we're going to ignore these short ones for the time being. So what we want to do is we're looking at the short one though. It's exactly the same as the long one. Is that we need to create a frame. And um, we need to create this latticing, we need to create the paneling, and we need to create these posts going across. So what we'll do first is we'll initially create the frame. So I'll just drag this to another monitor so I can see it. So what we're going to do is over in our network view, we're going to right click, type um, a cube. And we're going to set that so it is on the grid at the bottom. And then we're going to drag off of that and type transform. Um, so what we've got here is now our post. So I'm just going to, if we go over to here and we hit this one here, this will show the outline of our other mesh. Um, so we can uh, get the, the right uh, sizes and things like that. Or on the box, we're going to set this to polygon mesh and axis division to two, two. And so what we want to do is obviously make this narrower so it's more of um, fits within this. Um, so in our transforms, we will go um, 0.1, no, 0.1, 1.1. Uh, so try that 0 0.0. Um, is that going to be narrow enough? Nope. Uh, we'll try that point 0.6. Yeah, it's a bit better. There we go. And what we'll do is we'll center this one so it's on the grid this way. I believe it's that one. So there we go. So that when we size it, it's going up and along. So then we'll go back to our transform and we'll make this. I think two is going to bring it up. Um, we'll point this at 1.8 and a bit too low, 1.9. And um, then what we want to do is we want this to be, I believe, four. So there we go. So now what we need to do is we need to hollow this out. So I'm going to use a Boolean for this. So we'll drag off of transform, type in boo, Boolean. And what this is going to allow us to do is basically cut out this middle part in a minute. So what we'll do is we'll then copy our... Um, box transform here and we'll plug that in and nothing's going to happen currently but when we change the size here so in theory if we go to um let's think 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 we will obviously adjust the scale so let's try that at 3.6 oh, 3.6 and we see here we're getting some edging here um what we probably want to do is the height obviously do that let's say about six i think these might be a little bit too do that and then we will just uh make this a little bit wider so um we definitely know it's intersecting correctly and then what we need to do is just move this over and center it so if i just change the perspective to i believe it's front oh, yeah so front view and um so to change perspective we can drop down here perspective set view and um, what we'll do is we'll then just center this up by moving the translation. Um, obviously, this is just a rough. So we're getting our little frame. I think if we put that at 0.25, we're getting a frame. Um, but it's a little bit too big. So let's just uh, 0 0.75, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Seven, and then we'll just adjust these again. Obviously, you set it how you want it. So we'll do that, and then we will do um, that. So that's near enough. 
So go back to our perspective view, drop down perspective, and there we go. So we've got a hole in our fence. So this is essentially our frame here. So what we can do is then we'll add a bevel to it just to uh, make it a little nicer on the edges there. So we've just dragged off of that, created a bevel, and then it will just uh, curve this a little bit just so it's not so sharp. Um, there we go. So now what we want to do is we are going to add, looking at our pictures here, probably going to add that part in, these two crossbars here in. Um, yeah, we're going to add those two crossbars in. So what we'll do here is we will then create another box. And we will then create a merge. So we can merge these two together. And so we've got our initial box. So we'll check this to a polygon mesh and axis division two, two, two. And then what we will do is we will create a transform, slide that in the between the box there. And then what we're gonna do is we want to just show our merge so we can see it, our, see our mesh here. And we were gonna go to our transform and we are going to set the initial, sorry, go to our box and set the initial center so it's on the grid. And we'll do the same there as well. And um, then what we're gonna do is obviously set the, the width this way. So we believe is not, I want to just get these the wrong way around because they're slightly different in them. Um, we'll set that to four anyway, because we, we know uh, uh, that's the correct, is it, do we want to set it to four? We'll set it to 3.9 because obviously we don't want it to be uh, over creating Z fighting over here. So then what we'll do is we'll set this to 0.1. So we we'll say 0 0.4, 0 0.04, and that's going to intersect with our mesh here. But then let's just have that a little bit bigger. Yeah, so that's nice there. So then what we're going to do is set the height as well, um, which should be set that to one point. Let's have a look. Is that? 1.5, and then what we'll do is we will go and we'll move this up in the, so that's gonna be a bit too much there. So looking at our reference material, say, out there and then we need another one at the top so if we go um, drag off of this go copy transform and what this is going to allow us to do is create it tells you here how many copies do you want to create so we just want to create one copy of this and then we're going to move it up um, in theory there we go so it's two copies sorry so we're going to move that up to create our little lattice part at the top there um, I think I'm going to move this down a bit only because it doesn't doesn't feel right. And then move this up just a bit to create a lattice. And then I'm going to just make these a little bit narrower because I feel that they don't look right. Yeah. So now looking at our reference images here, we've got our one for our lattice up here and then the one for the panels that go across there. So now let's look at creating these panels. So what we'll do is we'll then um, let's think, so these, what we'll do is we'll select these and we'll name, if you click this up here, this puts this sort of um, comments box around it. So what we can do is name this um, cross beams, or not, or beams, beams. Um, so then when we're looking at each section, we know what it does. We'll uh, select all this again, click that one and name this um, uh, panel frame and um, that's that so then what we'll do is we'll also on this uh, transform here just after the transform we'll extend this out move these up drag off type oh not all of them drag off type poly for a poly bevel then we're just going to add a little bit of a poly bevel to this and you'll see here that it is also affecting the one above it so you can see there when I do that it goes boop, boop. so there we go so now what we're going to do is add our panels in. So what we're going to do again is create another box. And we are going to set that to a poly mesh, two, 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 drag off 
uh, transform and then that's going to allow us to size it. We'll plug this into the merge again so we can see it. And now we just need to get our panels comfortable with how we want them. So on our panels, we'll go over to here and type in 0.1 to initially see if that's what we want. Nope, we want it a bit to, um, a bit more like that, perhaps a bit like that. And then we're gonna set the height to 1.8, I believe. We need to move back up to our box, set the centering to 0.5 and the center that way to 0.5. And um, then 0.5, hit the right one. Then what we need to do is, so we've got that, that's the correct height, is we'll just drop this down just a little bit. Nope, we'll leave that as is. And then we'll just make this narrower. So we want it about 0.2 for our panels, perhaps. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to rotate this out, I believe the wrong one. We want that one. And um, we'll rotate these out so that they are giving the illusion of that sort of overlapping panel. And then what we'll do is we want these to, we will, I'm just looking at how we can do this. We probably want to look at making our post width thicker and our frame thicker. So what we'll do is we'll start with our frame. So we'll go back over to our frame here, go to transform, and we want to look at the thickness, which I believe is this one. And um, basically we want to make this until it's encompassing uh, our geometry here. So that should be about 10. Now obviously our post isn't correct. So if we go over to our post over here, and go to our transform, I believe, and we will say, well, we want that at 0 0.2, 0 0.2, try that initially, no, but we'll just do it at 0.4, so it looks a bit like a more sturdier post, and um, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, and then we want to do our cap as well. Um, what we will look at do is how, how to, at some point, scale the cap here, um, so that when we change the, the, the dimensions of this, it will scale the cap as well. Um, so what we'll do is then go to our cap transform. I've, you can see how I've created um, comments boxes around this so I know where they are. And we'll look at this and go, well, um, let's have a look. 0.2, not 12. Uh, it's going to be about 0.4 or 6 perhaps. Yeah, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. So that's created our cap there. So there we go. So now that looks more plausible. So now what we need to do is we need to copy these all along here. And um, so do we, are we happy with our fence uh, panel uh, sort of wood piece here? Um, do we want to make it a bit thicker? I think we should. Um, so what we will do is we'll try that. No, it's far too thick. So two, five, two, two, that will do. Then we'll drag off of this, do copy, transform, Plonk that in. So now what this is gonna do, we want to basically move our panel. So looking at here, that panel is a bit too thick now. So we'll put that back to two. So what we're gonna do is we want to basically move this along a little bit each time um, when we create a new um, uh, panel here. So you can see here what that's doing is that's creating that, that's creating our overlapping. And then in theory, if we go to our merge here, and we'll address this in a minute, um, what we can do is go to our copy and drag our copy up and you can see here it is creating our fence and what we will do is we will make this a little bit narrower and uh, say 0.9 and then we will just drag our copy transform back a bit say 0.19 and um, so that's put it in and then we should get no overlapping up here 21 and there we go so it's no longer overlapping the end so now obviously we've got this issue where it's um, this is coming through so what we might want to do is move these rails back um, so they're a bit more to uh, flush with that so we'll go to our cross beams go to our transform and what we will do is we will look for I believe it's this one and we just adjust that 
By the way, to get this little drop down menu, if you middle click, it gives you different increments of how much you want to move. Um, you can obviously manually type as well. So that's done our um, little uh, panel here. Um, what I've noticed here is I've then these two high easy fix. What we can do is go back to our transform, go to here, type in one, see where that takes us. Type in two, so we'll come back to two, maybe three. Yeah, there we go. So now we've got our um, panels here. So looking at our thing there, we've got our little fence uh, panels across here. Um, by the looks of it, we probably need to make these narrow. So that can be easily done by going to transform and say uh, one, two, perhaps. Yeah, that looks a bit more, a bit more like it. And then what we do, obviously, you need to adjust our uh, space in here. So what we can do is just, uh, shift that down to point two, and what we're getting is we need to just add a few more of these. I try thirty-one, so thirty-three. So there we go. We've got our panels going along here. Um, obviously we've got an overlap in here, so what we need to do is adjust the initial first one, which is easy enough. We can just go like that and go boop, boop, boop. So if we just set that off there and then get rid of that last one in theory, there we go. Um, so now what we're looking at is um, we will just through, uh, you can see here we're getting a bit of the uh, poly bevel here. Um, we want to do the same thing as moving this along that we did for the panels. Um, so now we've got that, that should be intersecting with that, correct? And um, that's doing that, that's doing that. So what we will do as well, just to add a little bit of, um, uh, so it's not so sharp as we'll drag off of our panels and type our poly bevel. And we'll just add a little bit of a bevel to that, to our panels there. And there we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at creating this lattice type thing here. So this is just, by the looks of it, it's just going to be creating cubes. Just looking, creating a cubes that go along. Uh, I'm just trying to think how you do this. Yeah, you'd want to create one that go in that way. I believe one go in that way, and then you duplicate them across, and then we'll have to cut the ends off so that they're flush. So let's see if we can do that. So you probably guessed already, box. <laughs> and um, we'll name this, uh, so select them all, and this is gonna be our wooden panel uh, pieces. Yeah, that'll do. So on this one, what we're going to do is we are going to merge that into that. And then what we're going to do is we are going to, on this one, we're going to center it as always, center again both ways, drag off, transform. And then we want to obviously get the width. Let's see if I can get this right. Well, hey, there we go. Um, 0.5 and then we want to create our so we want to make it narrower so try a point one what we'll do is we'll just sit in there for the minute and we're going to make it just a little bit less wide and then what we're going to do is we want to um rotate this i'm going to say i reckon it's at 45 degrees not that way though jay 45 and then what we want is obviously going the other way is we duplicate these create a merge here if I can actually get it to click create a merge join these two together and then what we want to do is I believe we put minus and then we want to shift these along so we just switch to our front view. We want to shift these 0.5. So then what's going on there? Um, well, we'll just set these back to zero. And then what we're gonna do is we obviously want to put that back to zero as well, so they're overlapping, correct. Um, what we wanna do is set these back to zero. So, um, 
that it is on the, I believe, the correct pivot point. And then what we'll do is we we'll try again. So 45 um, minus 45. And then I believe if we go 0.5 or minus 0.5 and then go to this one and go 0.5, 0.5. We get our overlapping. So I'm just trying to problem solve here. So copy and transform. And then what we're going to do is, in theory, is when we. So, yeah, what we're doing is we're getting our lattice effect there. So what we will do is we will get our lattice effect like we've got going here, and then we're going to trim the ends off uh, to create the sort of final result. So what I did there is on the transform is I've um, set this back to zero, this one. So this is no longer moving it along um, on, on the grid this way. And um, same with this one. Then I pivoted it in the transform 45 degrees and then minus 45 degrees and then I changed the translation um, of uh, the uh, so basically from minus 0.5 and 0.5 to create this overlapping effect and um, so then what we'll do is we'll go back to our perspective view and we want to obviously push these out so that they're not um, so overlapped uh, so what we'll do is I believe it's not that one is we'll just not so much is we'll just pull this out a tiny bit and then you want to go to this one and do the same but the other way otherwise what's going to happen there is you'll get overlapping so now what we'll do is we'll merge that with that and we need to push this into place so we'll get after this a transform not a soft transform transform and slide that in and we want to move this up so that is this one here and um, so that's that we will then move we will come back to this in a minute we'll just focus on getting this lattice effect so move to our front perspective so we get a better look so then what we'll do is we will then after the transform put in a copy transform drag that snap that into place and then off of this we will go well I want it to translate 0.3 and um, in in the uh, left and right there and then we'll move that along and we'll just fill this up here and um, that'll do so then we want to move this up a little bit more only because it doesn't it's not sitting right at the top there and um, that's that just check it's all right the other way so there so as you say we've got these stragglers here now what we want to do here is we've got that we want to probably get these so that they're the correct width let's have a look here how far we are out yeah we're quite a bit out here so what we want to do is go back to our transform and we want to scale this 0 0.3 and the same with this um, still no still not right so 0 0.2 0 0.2 and um, then we just want to shift the, we'll use this to shift it. So it shifts the entire lot over. Um, we will use this one here. Can I hang on this transforming now? <laughs> and um, so then, yes, yeah, so you can see here, so uh, it's sitting within this, um, this here so now what we can do is we now need to see how we can trim these edges off so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at trying to use a boolean so we'll just uh, drag off copy type in boolean uh, I'm sure there's probably other ways that we'll find the more we uh, learn about Houdini you know a more efficient ways to do this but this is the way I'm going to do it so um, what we'll do is we go to our panel frame and what we want to do is we want to grab this this frame edge um, to create our boolean so what we'll do is we'll select um, all three of this and our boolean and we'll copy it and then we'll go all the way over to here and we will paste it and we'll plug that in Ooh, 
You want to make sure we only select the bottom one there. We'll plug that in. So as you can see here, it's done absolutely nothing. The reason being is that uh, we need to resize this so that it fits correctly. Um, if we actually look, I believe if we look here, it's actually intersecting, but there's not enough um, edging around it. So what we'll do is we'll go to our transform and we will um, set this to five. And um, then we will drag this just so we're encompassing that side and that side. And then what we will do is we will then set the height of this. So that is this one here. And we'll scale, drag that up um, so that we're encompassing all of that. And then we will just check our merge. And so it's done the top. So we just need to address this bottom part here. So if we go here, go to our Boolean. The reason is there's, there's um, our Boolean spacing. Um, our geometry here that's intersecting is obviously cutting off the bottom, so all we need to do is just resize that as well. Um, so say we'll try 0.7, uh, drag that up. You can um, drag that, uh, move it here as well. And we'll just go to our Boolean, and by the looks of it, still not cutting anything off. So we haven't got quite enough there. So we will just um, try 0.6 and shift that up so we're now cutting off it looks like it's done it go to our merge and still not quite enough we'll get there in a minute and um, we will go say 0.55 and just again drag that up and there we go so it's nicely cut that off um, as I said there's probably uh, things here that can go get the sort of edges of this and cut it off but um, obviously not yet to find that out so there we go we've got our basic um, panel there so now what we can do is we can go to our post over here and we can merge these two together type merge plonk that in plonk that in and we've got that so now what we want to do is oh, we can see a little bit of an error over here so that means we haven't made it quite as long enough um, in that way by the looks of it um, so we will do 0.5 there we go so now what we want to do is we obviously want to copy what we've done here to a curve so that we can draw our fence out so what we'll do is we will um, Create a curve, uh, if I spell it right, and then we will turn on our grid snapping and we'll go plonk and we're just going to put a uh, four, let's try that, meter gap there. So we are going to see what this is going to happen here. I think what this is going to do is going to paste it across but it's going to follow the rotation of the curve um, which can be addressed in a minute. So what we can do is then we can go copy to points and plunk them in and you can see here that's copied to the points. So now what we want to do is we want to basically solve this issue where they're not it's not following the points um, the reason being is is if we go to our curve here and um, we uh, zoom right down here and we turn I believe it's uh, which one is it one of these basically our points are yeah, what we need to do. So basically what's happened is the, these points are all facing the same direction. You usually get these little lines that poke out showing you, but I think that'll come in next. So what we'll do is we'll drag from the curve, we'll type orient, and what this is going to do is going to say, where do you want the normals oriented along the curve? So initially you can see here, now we're getting this little line, but they're all po uh, poking off the wrong one. But what we want to do is we want to get the normal uh, the direction from the previous uh, normal, I believe it is, or the ne next edge, sorry, next edge. So it's looking ahead and saying, well, which direction is going. So you can see now, this is going long, 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 but that will still not do what we want it to do. In fact, it does something completely different. So I believe when we go to, uh, we just switch our, click on our curve orient and we switch the um, Y axis here. And as you can see here, it's changed the direction. We've changed, um, so when we, we adjusted this y-axis, initially it's um, flipped over for some reason. So we want to change the y-axis so it's going in the top direct, uh, correct direction. What I'll do is I'll just show, uh, if we just untick these, you can see it gets less, um, less messy there. Um, so now what we want to do is make this obviously follow the correct, uh, correct cur curve direction. 
So we drag off the Orient. Unfortunately, it's a little bit of code here or VEX. Um, what we need to do is basically get the orientation and tell um, whatever's being pasted to it to follow the um, uh, correct direction, which I believe is using the die heat head rule or something, however you say it. So what we'll do is we'll at orient and then equals die and um, there we go. Double click that and then we'll open bracket and then open squiggly brackets and then go one uh, comma zero comma zero close squiggly brackets then comma uh, at uh, at n which I believe is our normals close bracket and then do that so there we go so when we click in our scene it's now following the correct direction now if you want to know more about obviously these what this means you can click on the word and then hit f1 and what that'll do is that'll bring up the houdini help window here which is brilliant um as i said in previous tutorials i found out a lot about this and it tells you what it does so it's telling you um it's calculating the rotation um etc so it's, it's basically telling you know you can do your own research on exactly what it does and what all these are, the matrix quantry and all that. Um, but as you can see here, so we've created our panel fence. Um, we've obviously not created something amazingly advanced here, but we can, if we wanted to go and create less panels, make the panels wider, things like that. So what we can then do um, is we can go to our, where's our curve? See, I should give that a color. There we go, hit C on the keyboard to give it a color. And um, what we can do is then, so it says shift click on a point um, outside, and then we can add more to the fence. So what we can say is we can say, well, um, we want to pull that around there and um, pull that around there. And um, so remember, we always did it in spaces of four um, to get our fence. So we can see here that our last uh, fence here um, our last one keeps putting an extra post on, a post on. So what we can actually do is we can go to um, our curve. We'll just space this out a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically um, put drag off a group by range. And then we're going to set this to turn on our points a second. We're going to set this group type to points. And then I believe we want to attempt to get this last point, which I believe if we drag that up, yep, so that's got that. So then what we can do is we can drag off of that, so give it a name, uh, uh, group end point, oh, I'll get rid of that capital there, point, and then in this one, GRP end point, and then we'll drag off of that and go last, and then what will happen is that when we go to here, it's got rid of everything and we want to select the group. So we'll go group endpoint. So it's we want to actually reverse this so that we're keeping everything but the endpoint. So there we go. What happens there is that every time we create an endpoint, it's going to remove that last endpoint. So on our uh, 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 thing here now, the only one that's getting is the last point there, whereas before we were getting an extra an extra point on the end there. So yeah, that's how to create a very simple procedural fence. We will look at in our next tutorial, perhaps how to unwrap the UVs for this to then apply our own little wood textures or something like that. But yeah, this is the initial, obviously something a little bit more advanced than before in the sense that we're a little bit more focused in what we're doing. So um, yeah, well, we've got one little issue here I've noticed. Where's that gone? We are missing our metal. So we're missing our metal foot here. And the reason was that it's because when I resized it, I didn't resize uh, the location of the metal foot as well. So if we just find our uh, post T here, and what we'll do is we'll actually drag a transform off of this. As I say, um, in the future, we probably need to look at how, ca how can you make it so that it locks to the size of each um, uh, so when we resize this main post, it's resizing everything, you know, procedurally as, as obviously you would want Houdini to do, but for initially we just want to, we want to actually just try and create something. So there we go. Now we've got that there. So in theory, when we go to our copy to points, we should have those caps there. Yeah. Yep. So we've got our little fence posters. Obviously they're not, perhaps not ideal. 
um, because you'd, you'd probably need to look at in the future how you'd get these to sit correctly. Obviously, that one's all right, but this one here isn't initially all right. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, we've done something a little bit more, more fun and a little more... Um, focused so yeah in the next tutorial we'll look at how to texture um, a very simple texturing unwrapping and um, yeah so hopefully that helped if you did great